Okay. Uh, good morning. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so my name is Mark Scallon. Uh, I've been speaking to some of you guys already. Uh, I'm from U University College Dublin. Uh, this work was primarily conducted by uh, Taj Ahwal, who had intended to come and present to you, but the la at the last minute had to cancel his plans. Um, so uh, Taj was a, a student of ours in, in uh, UCD on our master's program, uh, who graduated last year. And this is uh, uh, a paper that has been produced as a result of his uh, dissertation research as part of uh, his, his master's. Um, it's co-authored by, by myself and my colleague in UCD, Anne Lecac, um, who uh, supervised uh, the project. So uh, the main points that I'm going to cov co cover here is uh, to go through exactly what Spotlight is, if you're not familiar with it. Those of you who are using Macs, I see a lot of Macs in the room, will be very familiar with it, I imagine. Um, talk through how we designed the experimentation, uh, what was conducted and what we found, go through some of the results of what, what we had, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you again. Okay. So, uh, first of all, Spotlight uh, looks like this. It's a Mac desktop search utility. Um, so it started in uh, 2004. It was released by Apple. Uh, and it was purely desktop search. So when it was, when it was released initially, it, it indexed the files on your local disk and allowed you to search those files relatively easily. Um, it's evolved over the years with the, with the uh, releases of uh, Mac over the years as well. So now it does things like uh, preferring some online searches as well. So you can see here, even in this example, it's doing an online search for a dictionary lookup or for related websites or uh, apps in the App Store, stuff like that. But the stuff that we're interested in is that it indexes the files on your local disk and allows you to search through those files. So on the left-hand side, you get the results for whatever you search for. On the right-hand side here, uh, you can get a, a thumbnail perhaps of what that image looks like, uh, of what that movie might look like, what that document looks like, okay? So if you think about uh, when this was released, so it was released in uh, 2004 for the first time. Uh, internet search was already popular, so that was started by uh, Alta Vista back in 1995 or so. Um, so if you think about web search, uh, it's, while, while it's not trivial, it's easier than looking at uh, proprietary formats on a, on a desktop machine. So web search, you, it's a text-based search. There's a standard, so the HTML standard is there. Uh, we know what we're looking for when we look through uh, such a, a formatted document. So we web search and indexing is relatively straightforward. Trying to build an index and to actually look inside of proprietary formats on a desktop search is more complex. Um, so yeah, so it was released in 2004. Uh, it allows you to search for information using keywords. Uh, and, of course, Spotlight uh, creates databases. So uh, it stores everything from the file system attributes, metadata, um, and it actually indexes any of the textual content that it can discover in a file. Uh, for those of you who uh, are not Mac users, if you've ever shared data with somebody via a USB key and you get all those uh, extra dot .spotlight files and dot .fs events files that annoys everybody, uh, they're the files that are, that are used for indexing um, each device. Okay, so uh, I'm speaking in, 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 in on Taj's behalf, as I mentioned. So uh, uh, he had this interest in, in this subject since 2011. Uh, so the reason that he, he focused on this for his research topic on his master's was that uh, the number of Macs that he was encountering uh, in his lab was increasing. The popularity of Macs is obviously uh, continue, continuing to grow. Um, so. In 2011, he was st started off looking at keyword hits on Spotlight directories. Uh, there were no tools available to parse the data. Uh, the format of the databases was proprietary and not documented. Uh, there was no published research about what that looks like from Apple or, or anyone else. Uh, in 2013, a company called 50 Forensics, you see what they did there, uh, they announced a tool called Spotlight uh, Inspector. And they had built a tool, and they had reverse engineered the format, um, but the tool disappeared almost immediately as, as it was released, um, and the structure was not, not revealed. It wasn't made open source, and it's not available any longer. Um, it's, based on the documentation that we can find about that tool, it was not known if it had any capability to handle uh, deleted records in any way. Uh, so in 2016, when he started his master's, uh, the examining of Spotlight had not really progressed. So uh, the current best practice for looking at this stuff is to use a, a, a lab machine, a VM or something. You mount the, uh, the device that you're looking for. So every single hard drive or storage media in the root of that device will have these Spotlight databases. And you use the official Apple tools, the command line tools that Apple provides, to interrogate that, data, that database. Um, 
So you're kind of manually looking through these records, and none of those uh, methodologies that are there so far uh, offer a solution for uh, recovering deleted records. So to give you an idea what this might look like, this is just a small sample uh, uh, bash script. Uh, I should say this script and more is available on a GitHub, which I'll have at the, a link on the last slide for you guys if you want. Um, so the, the line that really matters is that you're looking through the, the file, you're looking through the, the content for any of these uh, database files, and the one that really matters to you guys here is this line here. 104. So line 104 here, you're calling on MDLS, which is the Metadata Lookup Service. That's what that stands for. And you pass it in some parameters, and it'll, it'll look up to see if, this, if there's any records for this file already in the store, and it'll return the, those metadata records back to you. That only works for uh, currently active files, currently existing files, not for deleted files. Okay, so uh, metadata is obviously a hot topic. Uh, within forensics, the more metadata we can get our hands on, the better. Uh, to, the, the mis, to, to make the most of the metadata, we should be able to ideally understand any file and data structure that that metadata is stored in. You need to test to make sure that your interpretation or your processing of that data is accurate, and obviously it needs to be shown to be reliable. Um, so parsing the data then, uh, if you have ever tried to parse a file that you are not familiar with, I'm sure most people have at some point, uh, it's very difficult. You're kind of going blind, you, look at, you open it up in hex, you start looking at it. Um, it's, it's a very arduous process. Uh, you can also make incorrect assumptions about offsets and about what various things mean. So just because something works this time doesn't mean it will work the next time you look at the same type of file. So it's often misunderstood, and this can often lead to an incorrect, incorrect conclusion, being, uh, conclusion being drawn. So in terms of Spotlight itself, this is how it works. Uh, the core of the Spotlight system is the orange box there, the metadata server. So that's the software that actually runs the entire uh, service. So Every single file system event that takes place, uh, FS events is a, is a daemon that runs on, on Mac machines, which constantly monitors the file system for any changes, so all read, read writes, deletes, uh, modifications. When that happens, it updates the metadata server, say, there's a, say that there's a new file. So what that does is it, is it then, uh, if it passes it over to the metadata importer, which is what Apple call uh, their, their uh, tool for analyzing proprietary content. So a metadata imp importer, pretty simply, for uh, a JPEG photo, moving from the last talk, um, would automatically look for EXIF data and add that into the, the store, okay? Um, it, a metadata importer would also like, process a Word document. So it will actually index the text in the Word document to make that text searchable. So you can use Spotlight to look within the, the documents on your machine, not just by file name. Um, all of that stuff from Metadata Importer is sent back to the server, and all of these things are then stored inside the Spotlight databases, which is in the root of every storage media in a folder called uh, Spotlight v100, and that's a, a, a dot directory, so that's hidden on uh, Unix-based systems by default. Okay. Um, okay, so in terms of the events that, are, uh, tr that trigger an update to the database, so uh, FS events, again, is the daemon that runs, that monitors the file system for any changes. So for any of these events that are triggered, so creating a file, deleting a file, changing it, renaming it, modifying it, uh, exchanging a file, so if you're actually just uh, moving data between two files, uh, creating a director, directory, you're changing the attributes, you're, uh, yeah, pretty much anything you do triggers uh, an FS event, and that triggers an update to the metadata store, okay? So the metadata importers that I mentioned, so these are uh, a collection of tools that are able to consume uh, proprietary file formats. So obviously, Apple, when they started off first, they, uh, um, they knew all of their own fo file formats, so they created metadata importers for each of those. But over the years, they've added more and more of these importers, so now they can handle more files. So the, the thumbnail that you get, uh, or the text search that, that you get, is far more powerful as the versions of uh, macOS have increased. So there's a worker process then that uh, is kicked off whenever there's a file system event, and then each importer will extract the metadata and a list of words, passing it back to the metadata store um, to store it back in. So the store itself then, this directory, if you look into it, so uh, if you're on Mac, you can look into this on your own machine. It's in the root directory. Uh, so the stores are created on volumes, obviously, where the operating system has read-write permissions. So uh, again, if you've ever shared data with somebody with a Mac and you're on the Windows machine and they fill your, uh, it looks like they fill your USB key with lots of uh, these dot files, the, the, the spotlight files. Um, its presence uh, on a, direct, on a, uh, a disk uh, indicates that that disk has been indexed by, spot, by Spotlight at some point. 
there's a plist file on Mac which uh, stores the location of all of the spotlight stores that are being held on that local system. Okay, so uh, this research is mainly focused on uh, the metadata database. That's the thing that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, so that's obviously where all of the metadata is stored, all of the updates, all of the index content is stored. Um, so th that, that is a proprietary database structure. Uh, Mac's documentation, Apple's docu documentation, does not provide any indication as to how that's uh, formatted. So as part of the research, we kind of reverse engineered how it worked. Um, so first of all, what's already out there then in terms of that? So I mentioned already the, 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 the tool by uh, 50 Forensics that's no longer available. Um, there was no documentation to try and uh, get you through the, the, the store.db file. Uh, current methods of extracting it, so the current methods, methods of interrogating Spotlight, uh, use Spotlight itself. Okay, so the, 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 the lookup service that I showed you the example of in the Bash script, that's using the Spotlight tools to interrogate the database. Um, there was no research out there that proved deleted records are recoverable, either directly or from unallocated space. Um, and nothing out there describes the actual structure. Okay. So the approach to this work uh, was first to try and figure out the structure of the database, to identify the records um, relating to each file, and trying to establish then what happens uh, to deleted records. So are the records that are deleted recoverable from the, uh, the Spotlight database? Uh, how long are they recoverable after the file has been deleted? What happens if the uh, user uh, intentionally destroys the Spotlight index? Uh, can deleted versions of the database or database pages uh, be recovered within un unallocated space? Okay, so the, uh, the experiments that I'm going to talk you through all follow this kind of same principle. So uh, we use virtual machines. Um, so we create a virtual uh, Mac OS uh, uh, in installations, uh, various versions of Mac OS X uh, and Mac OS, the newer one. Um, and the reason we used virtual machines was that it, it was fast and quick and convenient, but also it allowed us to easily create snapshots of the uh, running machine and the versions of Spotlight at these, after these particular events. We then populated the, uh, the file system in the Spotlight database with known metadata. So we knew what we were putting, where we were putting it, and what we were doing. So we had a script to follow uh, for the interactions with the, with, the, uh, with the disk. The reason we did that is because uh, it obviously made, us, made it a lot easier to try and reverse engineer uh, the database. So all of the entry, entries associated with the actions that we performed, we knew that we had to try and find those in the database. Um, we then created scripts that, that en uh, enabled the processing of the structures to try and automate it and to carve out the structures. So all of the pages, the headers, the records that are in that uh, database file. Um, we, we needed to process uh, compressed content and encrypted content. And we need to identify all of the offsets and relative off offsets for the records and flags. All of these scripts, as I mentioned, are on the GitHub. Then what we did was uh, exploited that uh, database structure that we figured out to be able to locate deleted records within the database, parse whatever information we could from them, and then we were able to search through, uh, uh, use that same technique to search through deleted databases uh, in un unallocated clusters. Okay, so we had nine uh, different experiments that we performed. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the first experiment was looking at the persistence of the metadata records uh, within the store and unused space on the system. The second one looked at the persistence of the records on mounted volumes. The third, persistence of records on mounted volumes that were shared across two different operating systems, uh, specifically Mac and Windows. Um, number four, persistence of records when spotlight indices are deleted using the uh, appropriate uh, command on the command line in uh, Mac. Persistent of records when spotlight indices were deleted via the, uh, the GUI interface. Persistence of records when spotlight indices are deleted using the, again, the terminal command and repopulated with uh, a, a very large number of files. So you would think that that would completely overwrite the content. Uh, creation of metadata records for the, the purposes of reverse engineering the metadata store. You'll note that that was experiment number seven that we designed. So whether, as I go through the experimentation, uh, I'm skipping number seven because everything else I'm showing you, we learned during number seven. Uh, number eight, uh, we have a, a, the persistence of records when the operating system is upgraded, so both minor and major uh, releases of Mac OS upgrades, and the persistence of the records then within the unused space, uh, we use 10 casework uh, forensic images. Okay, so what we discovered uh, is there are three main types of uh, database pages within the store.db files. Um, so you have the header page, the map page, and the data page. 
Uh, they're each identifiable by the four byte uh, signature. So you see the four byte signature there, um, which is always located at the beginning of the page. Okay. So the header page looks something like this. Uh, so this is an example. Uh, so in our experimentation, this page has always been uh, 4096 bytes in length. Okay, that's not to say it always is, but in our experimentation, it always was. Um, so you'll see here at the beginning of the file, you have the header string, which is HTSD, which refers to the, uh, the header page. Uh, you then have the page size, again, which is, has always been uh, four kilobytes long. And then you have a variable length uh, store.db file, uh, because of course it's, it's, it, has to, it depends where that database file is being stored, so it's of a variable length, and just that, that's a string to indicate where the DB file is, and that's terminated by a null. The second one then, the map page. So the map page uh, is the database map, so it, it says where everything is on, on the disk. Uh, it describes each data page encountered within the, the, the database, I should say. The first 32 bytes provide the information regarding the page, and starting then at offset 32, uh, which is the blue highlighted piece, piece of the uh, hex you're looking at. Um, each data page is described then using 16 bytes, and the first four bytes declare the size of each data page, and we don't actually know what the next 12 bytes are. We weren't able to figure that out. Uh, Store.db data page then. So these pages then contain uh, different types of data described further in the paper, uh, but we're really focusing on the uh, uh, metadata stuff for this talk. Um, the header of the data pages are always identical, and the records for uh, parsing the data pages were always found within the first 20 bytes of these uh, pages. So the, uh, the compression library, so you'll see here the content in red is uh, junk. It looks like junk. It's compressed content. Uh, so Apple stores the metadata here using, uh, in a compressed format using the Zlib uh, library. Um, and the next slide, we have that uh, decompressed. So you can see that it, it, it obviously contains useful information. So um, the metadata that's contained here and that we've highlighted and are uh, uh, described in detail in the paper uh, includes the uh, creation dates, modification dates, the, uh, the file attributes, the owner, um, uh, et cetera, the metadata that you might expect there to be there. Uh, it contains the file names and uh, creation dates as well, which is, which is useful later. Um, so the interesting metadata out of this uh, data page is, in particular, is the catalog node ID, which is in purple there at, uh, at offset four, and the parent uh, catalog node ID, which is in pink there at offset 10, okay? Um, so it's similar here to a, a structure of a network uh, database. So each record maintains a relationship with its parent uh, and allows a hierarchical arrangement of records to be built. Uh, so the catalog node ID is used by HFS Plus uh, to uniquely identify each file or folder on the system. Uh, an important feature of the catalog node ID is that they're not reused until they're exhausted and then it cycles around. Uh, new files created on the HFS file system are given the next uh, CNID, even if an earlier one has been made available because of a deletion. So it's, it's a sequential issuing of it until they expire and then it loops back around, okay? So why is that important? Uh, we can use that to identify deleted files, so files that no longer exist within the, the catalog main index file within HFS Plus, and it allows us to recreate direct directory structures. So we know <coughs> in this hierarchical structure, it is the mapping of the file system and the folders and directories. Okay. So um, our first experiment, uh, we took... Uh, uh, we added some files on, onto the system. We then deleted them. The stored the, the, the store.db file, um, there's two versions of it. There's store.db and dot store.db. So the dot file is obviously a hidden file again on Mac and Unix-based systems by default. Uh, we believe in our, t in our testing the dot file is actually the main database and the store, the, the one without the dot, uh, is the version that's the, the last known good one. So if anything goes wrong, it can revert back to that previous store and then it can build the index again. This is what we've, we've seen. Uh, the metadata records within the database persist for an amount of time after uh, uh, the corresponding file on the file system is deleted. If you do uh, a large deletion event, so uh, for example, deleting a, a folder worth of files or whatever, um, entire database pages are dropped and then if that's the case, uh, they're not recoverable on the file system. Uh, so, although Spotlight reported that indexing was complete, so Spotlight periodically 
Again, it's monitoring the file system using FS events. So uh, it indexes the content. If you plug in an external hard drive that has uh, hundreds of thousands of files, it takes time to index that. Okay, so Spotlight will tell you the status that it's at for each new device that you plug in. So although Spotlight reported that the indexing was complete, not every file was actually indexed because it takes several minutes for the files that are discovered to be passed to the metadata importers to be passed back to the server to be stored back out. Okay, so indexing is complete. It knows the files are there, but it hasn't yet processed uh, get, getting all of the metadata out of those files. Um, Okay, so after a short period of time then, the uh, databases do catch up uh, with all of the outstanding notifications from the uh, metadata uh, parsers. Okay, so uh, each record, as I mentioned, is of variable uh, size and it sits back to back with the, uh, with the next record. So the data stored within uh, these pages are compressed and when the records are deleted, the remaining rec records show like a, a fluidity and collapse into the newly, uh, made, uh, newly made space in the, in the page. Uh, the consequence of this uh, is that it overwrites any deleted records. Uh, so once a deleted record is removed from the database, they're no longer recoverable. Um, there's a small asterisk there. If you did have access to the system and were able to move quickly enough, you could recover it uh, because if FS events, again, that's the thing that's monitoring the file system, if that's still trying to keep up with the events that, have, uh, that are happening on the disk, if a, l a large deletion event has taken place, for example, well, you have time there until FS event has a chance to catch up. But that only works if you're analyzing a live system. Um, so if you, uh, it's possible that you could still recover the deleted metadata files if you look at the last good version, which is just the store.db uh, file. So the last good configuration will still have those deleted records until that, until that peri periodically updates. And if you examine the unallocated uh, clusters, you can recover uh, deleted or recover uh, deleted pages from that database in those clusters, and you can still process them. So you can still find those deleted records in other places, they're just not in the live version, the .store.db. So in the second uh, experiment, uh, the databases were, po were populated again. We added in, in files, we deleted a lot of files. Uh, so once we deleted uh, the, from the store database, it's no longer recoverable. Uh, one noticeable exception that we encountered was on uh, the FAT32 uh, formatted volume. So every metadata record remained intact and is actually recover recoverable on a FAT32. So we didn't see this fluidity and this kind of collapsing of the record. Um, it didn't matter that the files were deleted and the last known good uh, configuration, this, just the store.db file, uh, that wasn't updated even after 30 minutes. The next experiment, we had two USB devices, uh, one formatted XFAT, the other formatted FAT32. We moved them between Mac OS and uh, Windows 10. Uh, so at snapshot one, uh, there was an expectation that the uh, databases would contain uh, 2753 records, but only about half of them were actually indexed. So that did skew the results, but we, the reason that that is is because the metadata importer is still working. Okay. Okay, the next experiment uh, involved uh, re-indexing re the Spotlight metadata using different methods. So you can use the GUI, you can use uh, the terminal commands. Uh, so when you re-index the metadata store, it results in the metadata store pages being deleted, um, and they are actually available for recovery from the file system directly. Uh, each time the databases were deleted, uh, the store databases were created again, as confirmed by a, a new catalog node ID being issued. In experiment eight, uh, we were looking at the, uh, the different uh, major and ma uh, minor releases and major releases of Mac OS. Um, so deleted pages appeared within the uh, unused space of the file system across upgrades. Examination of that file uh, shows that the database itself is not deleted, but remained uh, in the same location pre-upgrade and post-upgrade. Um, a check of the physical location of the pages showed them to be in different locations uh, from the site of the original databases. So it's suspected then that uh, a copy of the metadata store is created when the system is undergoing a major update, uh, and that copy uh, then gets subsequently deleted, um, and during a minor update, that behavior does not take place. Okay, the last experiment then, uh, we were looking to identify uh, if deleted uh, database uh, files, or different database pages could be recovered from actual casework. So there was uh, 14, uh, different cases here. Uh, so unallocated records are recoverable for, from the 
unused space on file systems. Um, every database page was found uh, to be the size of 16384. Uh, they were always found at a sector boundary on the disk. Uh, five of the examined images uh, made use of a different uh, version of the database, so store uh, v1. So this is down to the, uh, uh, depends what, what version of Spotlight you had when you first used Mac, and if you, again, Mac users, you'll be familiar, when you buy a new Mac, magic things happen and everything comes over to your new Mac, so it pulls over all of those Spotlight directories uh, with it. Um, although database uh, pages are, are still uh, recoverable, the records, uh, you can't process them until, uh, because the structure has, has changed. If you look at the last one here, this one I think is of particular interest, so the last case. Uh, this is an Apple hard disk, uh, or a, sorry, a hard disk that was originally shipped with an Apple machine, uh, verified by the, the label and the versioning of, of the machine. Um, and then it was subsequently used in Windows 10 as the uh, primary storage device, sorry, as a secondary storage device formatted as NTFS. Uh, it was being used as a, uh, on the Mac machine as uh, storage as well. So it was, it was NTFS formatted on the, uh, the Mac machine. Uh, the, so the, sorry, I, sorry, I tell a lie. It was HFS plus to begin with on the Mac machine as it shipped with the Mac computer, and then it was in the Windows uh, machine and was reformatted as, as NTFS. Now I'll continue my story. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, what was interesting is, is that we were able to recover we were still able to recover the pages of the Spotlight database store, and we were able to recover records from the Mac machine. Uh, over a quarter of a million records were still recoverable from the NTFS volume after it was reformatted. That's better, right? So, uh, in summary, then, so uh, the structure of the metadata store database was uh, was analysed and uh, partially decoded. There was one thing that we couldn't figure out. Uh, experiments were used to reveal that records persist for uh, a period of time within one of the copies of the database. Once a record is deleted, it's no longer recoverable from within the database, but could still be recovered from a copy or from unallocated clusters due to that uh, fluidity. Deleted pages from the database are recoverable from unused space on the file system. Uh, if the operating system undergoes a major update, it appears that uh, uh, a copy of the metadata store is created before subsequently being deleted. Um, database pages can be recovered from the unused space on the file system. And if the spotlight index is, re uh, is reset, re-indexed, or recreated, the whole metadata store is deleted, and then you can get those database, database pages still from the unused space on that file system. So if you're interested in learning more, obviously your first protocol will be our paper that's just published in this conference. Uh, but your second protocol, uh, completely coincidentally and in parallel and without any communication, uh, there was a paper published just last month in Digital Investigation called Investigating Spotlight Internals to Extract Metadata. Okay. Um, so this was by uh, uh, Yogesh uh, Katri. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so... What's interesting is that uh, our scripts that we're providing are all Bash-based uh, scripts. Um, uh, Yogesh is a pri is, is, uh, did it all in Python. Again, it's open on, on his uh, GitHub. You'll access the GitHub links there. Um, the difference between our research and this published research is that we were able to, and we were focused, and we were able to recover uh, deleted records. So once, once a file was, uh, was gone, we were able to cover that information from the metadata store. So both approaches we're trying to reverse engineer the proprietary store.db file and the associated pages, and that's what's highlighted in that digital investigation paper that was just published as well. Okay, so uh, that's all I have. Uh, I'll try to take any questions you have. There's one at the front here, I don't know. So my question is now, have you done an uh, experiment on APFS? <laughs> uh, yes, is the answer. So uh, we don't have results yet. Uh, so AP APFS is a, game, is a game changer in terms of how this stuff is, is conducted. Uh, in our experimentation, it makes like recovering the deleted pages from the unallocated clusters not viable, right? So... Uh, but we are currently looking at this, and this research is continuing, and certainly APFS is, is on our list, but we don't have such 
results yet. Okay, everyone else is happy, thank you.